what I just wanted to talk about, I've got a few slides that I'll bring up on the screen in a minute, and it's really the, around the importance of digital transformation because, um, you know, this, this, this event, it's not just about saying, hey, we, we're really good at digital. This event is really about being one of the top 30 providers in the UK that are doing transformation and digital is part of transformation, but there's much more to transformation than the technology. So I'm just going to bring a few slides up. And hopefully everybody can see the slide deck that I've just brought up on the screen. Um, and I will just whisk through them. Okay, so first of all, welcome and congratulations. As I said, being part of the Digital Top 30 is amazing achievement. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of digital transformation. And for me, there's, there's three aspects to transformation. There's the digital technology and in innovation side. There's um, assurance, which I would term as, you know, really good, robust governance and process workflow uh, and enabling people to do the job in a really, really easy but controlled way and making sure that you know risk is being managed around things like that and providing assurance to the to the exec teams and boards and one of the biggest parts of transformation for me is people and culture so when i knew when i worked in housing i've worked in housing for, since 2007 for several housing providers and when i knew i'd really achieved it and been successful at a, a a housing transformation kind of program was when the uh, deputy chief exec came up to me um, and shook me by the hand and said you've done it and the reason we'd realized that i'd done it it wasn't the technology it wasn't that people were doing the jobs is that we we'd changed the culture of the organization and we'd help people to deliver services in a different way through technology and through, through really really robust governance and that for me was when i looked around and i said yes i've achieved what i set out to do and i think one of the key things is making sure that um, your transformation plans are always aligned to what it is that the business wants to achieve. So there's five key areas that I think is, is really important to look at and, uh, around transformation. One's, one's the customer experience. It's key to successful transformation. Uh, keeping things simple, but um, doing things in a speedy way as well, being efficient continually investing in, uh, in technology and, and being in, innovative, but also investing in your people. So that just isn't a money-driven investment. It's also investing in your workforce, making sure that you've got the right skills in, in the team and bringing people on that journey with you as well. Uh, making decisions based on facts. So having people and systems and insight and data that you can make really, really good decisions to help drive your business. And then number five is enabling collaboration and, and, and being accountable for, for, for what you do, basically. So that kind of breaks down, in, in my view, uh, transformation starts with people. Uh, it starts with looking at what you're trying to achieve and what the outcomes are that you're trying to, to get to. And part of that is really around uh, the culture of an organization and the customer. So not, not just the culture of, of, of what your business is like, but what is your customer demographic like? You know, different organizations have different demographics of social housing customers. Um, and, you know, can your people, does your culture support uh, those people living in, the, in those properties? The customer and the workforce of the future. So it's just thinking about what 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 the customer is going to expect. What is the customer of the future going to look like, uh, and what is the workforce of the future going to look like as well? And what do you need to do to actually meet their expectations and aspirations? So what are your business aspirations? It's really really important to understand them, understand where you're going, understand the business strategy, so that you can overlay a transformation and digital uh, transformation program into that. And then skills. So what skills have you got to deliver the transformation? But what skills have you got out in the business once you've delivered that digital transformation to continue to deliver really good service? Learning and development, huge part of transformation. So continually learning as you move through the transformation process. Transformation's never, never ending in my view. You're always learning, you're always developing, people are learning and developing, but so are your customers through the services that you're providing. So for example, more online services, more different ways of delivering services, or is, is sharing knowledge with your customer as well. 
service delivery and support is really, really important in transformation. So that's kind of looking at how you want to deliver services, what you might need to do to, to do to redesign services, but also how you're going to support the delivery of those services through technical transformation. Uh, and people are key to that. People are really, really key. The culture of the organization is really key to how services is delivered and thinking differently. So if you've got um, a culture that thinks differently, allows people to be innovative, allows people to come up with ideas and drive things forward, then you're more likely to achieve, achieve successful transformation. So that, that that's a slide on kind of the people side of transformation. And then underpinning what you're doing from a transformational point of view with flexible governance. So not being really robust in the way that you deliver things in terms of um, being overly bureaucratic, for example. So enabling colleagues to deliver great service is, 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 is really good. And your governance and your process needs to be able to support that. Um, providing assurance, remaining compliant and viable. So that's basically making sure that your digital transformation program or your transformation program is providing your exec team and your board with assurance that um, you're going to remain a, a, a well-governed and compliant organisation and a viable organisation moving forward. Addressing risk and uh, doing things in the right way is, is, is really key in, in any transformation program, as well as having efficient processes and workflows. Uh, and, and, uh, and as I said before, being non-bureaucratic, so making it easy for people to do the job and making people um, see, you know, see transformation as a good thing and want to come on the journey with you is really, really important. And a big part of that is not putting processes in place that are overly bureaucratic. And obviously providing uh, via value for money. So spending money wisely, because at the end of the day, it's it's residents' money that's being spent on on digital transformation. So it needs to provide a great outcome for those for those customers and the workforce. Um, any transformation program should be enabled by technology. Technology in itself doesn't deliver transformation. So we, we go into quite a lot of organizations where we, we see people, oh, I want to procure a system or I want to procure an infrastructure and that's going to change everything and it's going to transform our business. It, it isn't really. The technology will, it will help enable transformation, but it needs to be wrapped together with really, really good process and governance and, pe and people and culture. Um, so making sure that the business drivers are aligned with technology and digital is a really important part of a strategic transformation program, making things easy and not overcomplicating things um, for people and, and making technology and delivering technology that's easy to understand and easy to use is really, really important. Helping people to work together. And that's not just, not just individual, individual teams within an organization. It's helping organizations to work together in terms of um, social housing with social care health education employment so if technology can enable that that's fantastic because one of the big barriers that, that i've seen is um in the past is kind of organizations being able to work together because of technological barriers that are put in the way in terms of sharing data sharing systems having a single infrastructure that kind of thing so technology needs to be able to enable uh people to work together adopting adopting and embracing technology so that's really um technology needs to be delivered in a way that enables people to use it effectively to deliver great service um, so it's really important that the workforce can adopt the kit uh, the tools the technology that, you, that, that an organization is providing and embrace the change and embrace the fact that technology is really helping to deliver great service and do things in in in, in the right way. Um, so it's a, it's it's a really key aspect of any digital transformation program, and remaining ahead of the curve. So that's really looking at what's coming along. Um, I've just been saying in breakout room, my head's always like three to five years down the line, thinking what's next. So I'm already thinking about kind of how service will be delivered in housing over the next three to five years. And in my view, it's totally going to change because um, the way that technology solutions providers are developing systems is really, really going to change the way that service is delivered in the future. Um, so, for example, uh, if we're making really key decisions based on insight and data, uh, that's been produced through systems and that's really going to change the way 
that we respond to what the data is telling us and how we design services for the future. So, for example, who's going to sit there, analyze the data and then um, and then do a call to action based on what the data is telling you. It's really, really important that people are starting to think strategically around the design of future services. Um, using data and, and insight to help make decisions. So obviously we're seeing that a lot, um, you know, and it's, and it's really key and it will continue to be key. Um, we, you know, data is becoming ever more important all the time, but it's, it's taking data and turning it into useful insight that will help an organisation to move forward. Um, and then I see, this is the last slide really, I see um, transformation, it's a bit like building a house. So every house needs... Um, really good foundations um, the foundations from an IT point of view are infrastructure provides stability and perf performance and gives agility and then once you've got a great infrastructure you can stick your applications on top of it which are kind of your bricks and mortar in terms of building a property and um, that then gives you really good kind of opportunity to look at data and workflow and start looking at process based around service provision and making decisions uh, once you once you can once you've got quality data and your data is really clean and it's good data, you can start using that in an insightful way to making interventions and design service. And then that's a bit like you're putting the the roof on the house kind of thing. So once you've got all your infrastructure applications, your data and insight in good shape, and you've got quality processes and people are using the technology and following really really good streamlined processes that's when you can be an innovation led organization and you're bringing people on the journey with you and starting to transform. So you start being ideas led and innovative, which, which kind of transfers into using technologies like assistive tech, predictive analytics, IOT, automation, automation and artificial intelligence. In terms of housing, that's really about once you've built a house and you've got people living in it, it's about providing opportunity uh, for people um, making sure that they're healthy, making sure they've got access to education, uh, they've got life choices, self safeguarding people in the homes and properties and providing skills and employment. Uh, and it's really about providing great customer experience. And that's what really, if you, if you overlay technology uh, into housing and social housing, that's kind of how, how, how I see it kind of developing all, over, over time really on any transformation program so the importance of transformation really is about continually evolving and providing opportunities for people and people being staff and our customers and that's it yeah no thank, thanks very much there and um, and yeah morning everyone uh, and, and it's quite interesting in fact I should follow Steve actually and, and, and again Steve a great presentation there you know, first of all, well done to everybody for being, uh, you know, nominated for the for the various awards, etc. MRI are very, very proud to be part of this. Um, you know, again, we're a, you know, a big provider now to the organisation. I think, you know, I've, I've kind of got my slides. I've got my slides here, but kind of St Steve sort of changed my talk track now that I was going to go through. But but we'll I'll stick with part of it originally. Then I'm going to kind of change it up a little bit now, Steve, based on what you've said there in, in a good way, in, 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 in a good way. Um, so so just a very, you know, kind of one minute overview of, of MRI and what we did in the last sort of 12 months, really. Uh, went on a, a big acquisition trail with the procurement of Orchard. Uh, and then they bought Castleton, which is the business that I, I originally came from. Uh, and then more likely than they bought the, the housing partners organised. You know, with the acquisition of those, that gets us 850 social housing providers across the UK, Republic of Ireland, uh, and also around 50 odd in, uh, in Australia and New Zealand as well. So again, you know, a, a kind of a very, very good number there. We also have about two and a quarter thousand affordable housing providers in, uh, in mainland America. But... If we go back, you know, if we go back to what that meant, then you know, we went on the acquisition trail. It meant then we get a whole raft of technology. You know, we have fifty plus solutions now across the stable. Um, but critically, what do we want from that? It's great to have all these all these technologies, but actually, unless they're being used, it's just having a load of shelfware. And I think if I tie back to what Steve said there, you know, as a, as a supplier and a partner to this sector, what we want to do is is see our technology being used as much as physically possible. Because I think the more that we can see it being used, the more reference sites we get, the, the more events like this we can come to, the more success we can see, the, you know, the better we, you know, the better the difference that we think we can make, you know, make, make to all those various points. So we bought all those solutions together. You know, 
we, yeah, we've, we've done well. We've gone 44 minutes and no one's mentioned the word COVID or coronavirus, which, which must be some sort of miracle. Uh, but, but as an organization, we have to adapt. Uh, and again, listen to what Steve said there around, around digital transformation, et cetera. We have to transform digitally. This has become the norm now. The breakout room I was in just with, with Shendi and Ruth and, and a couple of other people there, you know, was, was this is now the norm. So actually, as a provider of technology, we've had to change. And of course, as providers to, to a valuable set, of course, you guys have had to change as well. And, you know, we'd like to think that, you know, that MRI have been part of that journey for, for many, many organizations. And then we can't, we can't have another conversation around technology and not talk about the social housing white paper. And again, there's a slide on there in a moment. And again, I listened to what, to what Steve was saying there, right? you know, the good use of data. And, and I think Steve, you said decisions based on facts. And, um, you know, I think there's a huge, huge drive there around, around data. And again, I'll come on to some of those points in, in, in a moment. So, you know, look back at what MRI have done, you know, what we've bought and what, and what we've acquired. What does that lead us to be? Well, that leads us to be, you know, the sector, you know, <clears throat> a trusted partner to the sector. You know, we don't want to be just a provider. We want to be a partner. We want to be the one that listens to organizations. And, you know, again, we, you know, we, we work with a lot, a lot, a lot of interesting people, uh, you know, across the sector. We work with, you know, we work with various vendors and consultants, et cetera, across, across the board. You know, we want to be, you know, what, what he says on the screen there. We want to be the trusted technology partner of choice. But critically, why, why do you want to do that? Well, you know, if you look at MRI globally, they've got millions and millions and millions of people living, living, organized, uh, living properties that, that are run by their wider real estate software. And what we're looking to do now is how we can bring some of those learnings in from that other space that MRI are part of now to bring that into this particular sector. So Steve Rapp talks about IoT and all those things. That's been the thing that's been in main, main, mainstream real estate now for many, many years. So how can we bring some of those technologies to this particular part? And again, there's a reversal around that, how we can take some social stuff and put that into, into other areas, basically. Critically, MRI's corporate strategy is to, is to make, make places better, make uh, estates better places to work, live and play. That's what their corporate strategy is and corporate mentality is. So actually, how can we positively impact those things on communities? And again, I was listening to some of the guys in, in the breakout room, I was in there, some of the projects that they've been part of. And again, what we want to be is we want to be that tech provider who can provide all those things. And you know, again, so listening to what Steve said there, you know, you know, let, let's get some of these technologies out there, but it doesn't, you know, just supplying technology delivered to the door, uh, which is a phrase that someone recently used in a conversation I was in, delivering that tech to the door is no point unless there's great adoption of that in the organizations. And again, we, we really, really want to be the provider who can, who can work at that level and do all those various things. You know, transforming social housing is what MRI want to do. They want to transform it at the technology level, but they can only do that if, if all organizations want to come with us on the journey. If we can embrace the things that we've got and get that technology truly, truly, truly utilized out there. And I think we've got, I think we've got everything that we need to get in the technology stack. But again, what we don't want to see is wasted technology and, and, and wasted utilization of that across, across the board. Um, you know, I'll, I'll finish then because I've got to keep to my keep to my five minutes of time. You know, this is what we can do. We can do all of these things. We can look at the property, look at the house, we look at the finance, the person and, and all the various things that can wrap all around that. And actually, again, listening to and again, Steve, I don't want to keep taking your keep taking your words. But, you know, the, the true value around around this is actually you guys already know all this data. And again, there's some great digital journeys been happening here. But actually, what more can we do? What more can we leverage out of those? You know, look at some of the things we're going to talk about in, you know, over the next sort of hour or so there around some of the great use there. And, and actually, is there more that we can even do there? You know, leverage the power of that data. Think about what you guys have as, as, as housing providers across the sector. You know, you know everything. You know that person. You know that asset. You know the financial status of it. All of those things there. We're in a very, very, very privileged sector here in terms of what we know around everything around that particular asset so again what we want to do is be the be the tech partner who can help you to to leverage the most out of that thank you very much for that james much appreciated um so um we're going to move on to our uh, countdown basically our countdown from 30 to 1 um so we're going to kick off with the um the 31 minute elevator intros uh, yep, so I'm Richard, uh, Housing Solutions in Maidenhead. Um, I suppose the main part for us is obviously we're on this journey with everyone, um, but what we've been focusing on, what our pitch was around, um, was very much focused on, yes, you've got the customer portals that most organisations are using and pushing, but for us it was around, um, it's around focusing on the customers that aren't comfortable in using those customer portals, 
and have an alternatives um, alternative solutions in place um, where they can still access our digital services. So we've worked with James at MRI to develop like the Alexa skill. So and that's an alternative for the the portal. Um, and we're working on some other bits um, using pictures rather than than voice. And um, one of the other key things for us is around it's great having all of these tools, but it's around that digital inclusion piece. And we're very much focused on making sure that our customers have got access to the internet, um, providing Wi-Fi um, in their homes, um, because obviously we want them to use not only just our services from day one, but also all the other services as well. And I suppose during the lockdown period and homeschooling, that's come more and more uh, to light around people's need for a decent internet connection. So. That's what we've been focusing on. And I think I'm just two seconds short, but I'll pass over to the next person. Excellent, thank you. Um, next up, we've got um, Ruth Montgomery of Rural Housing Association. Um, hi, so our project was focused around a few different elements. So in the pandemic, we were trying to find ways that we could engage with our customers um, to make sure that we were still providing that community engagement side of side of our work. So we developed a project called the Digital Connections Project, which is for our tenants who are in rural dispersed communities. So as a rural housing association, all our tenants um, would live in rural areas across the entire of Northern Ireland. Um, so for us developing a digital connections project during lockdown and during the COVID-19 pandemic, was a way of helping us ensure that we were still listening to the tenant voice and helping them inform service delivery, particular, particularly during the pandemic. Um, so we sought funding to, to access digital technology for our tenants, which we were successful in doing. And we've been able to provide them with tablets and digital inclusion training to increase um, our tenant participation work during the pandemic. And that's me. Excellent, thank you very much, Ruth. Um, next up, we've got uh, Steve Alcock, who is Director of ICT Data and Digital at Johnny Johnson Housing. Hi, thanks, Joe. Uh, good, after good morning, sorry, everyone. Um, so, yeah, our paper was all around the foundation setting for 2020 that we've done. I think, like most, we, we had to swing into action fairly quickly uh, and look to move as much of our IT estate into the cloud, roll out things like Office 365, and understand what our colleagues um, skill gaps are. I think that was mentioned in some of the presentations about taking colleagues on that journey and, and making sure that we have the right skills to be able to build um, our, our future vision. Um, so that's really the premise of, of what 2020 has meant for us. We're, we're currently in the process of redesigning our, our website portal and mobile app experience for our residents. And, and we're doing that very much hand in hand. Um, our our customer demographic is, is mainly um, the elderly population. So um, that presents its challenges from a digital culture perspective, but we're, we're working with them on a regular basis. We're starting to conduct regular community online forums. We have our, um, our scrutiny panel that is, is now digital um, and we're, we're slowly drip feeding digital skills and awareness out to our residents and, and looking to um, provide flood fill Wi-Fi within our schemes. And we're, 2021 will be very much about getting our website live, our portal on our mobile app, um, and then starting to provide a much richer in-home digital offer. But it's uh, it's great to have made the top 30 anyway and look forward to uh, seeing where we end up next year. Brilliant, thank you, Steve. Next up, we've got Shendi Keshet, the Director of Finance and Resources at Manningham Housing Association. Um, Manningham Housing Association um, operates in Bradford, and we've got around 1,400 homes and 6,000 residents of mostly um, South Asian origin, though we've got other customers as well. And, and I think that that brings um, unique communication challenges, especially under COVID. And as our organization is a community hub also, so we had to to think of some really unique um, ways of, of communicating and, and um, um, helping our, our residents. So what we, we've done is we've um, enhanced our community and involvement area, and we've got tablets and um, online um, resources for everybody. And I think that even though we're small, we've got really big ambitions. I think I'm um, hopefully on James's Christmas card list this year, 
um, because we're moving on with um, MRI um, Asset 4000, Document 4000. We're integrating as best we can with BRICS and we're um, bringing on um, Caseware, which is audit production software, which we're going to be using for our um, management accounts also. So um, that's, that's prior to year end or during year end. And then after year end, we're going to be moving into new software too, which I haven't sorted yet. So, so I think that for us, um, the digital transformation is, is holistic. It really is. It's absolutely root and branch changes. And um, even though COVID's brought some challenges, I think um, we've not been blown off course with it. So thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Shendi. Much appreciated. Uh, next up, we've got Andy Beardwood, who is the IT Projects Manager at Phoenix Community Housing. Morning, everyone. Thank you. Um, um, yes, I'm Andy Beardwood, Program Manager for, for the Phoenix Community Housing's digital transformation program um, called Digital Together, uh, which is focused on improving customer satisfaction. Um, we're a resident-led housing association based in South London. Uh, we have about 6,000 homes in the borough of Lewisham. Uh, and our main board of 12 members has six residents, including our chair and vice chair, who are both Phoenix tenants. So residents are really key to decision making in Phoenix and, and have, uh, have uh, led and backed this transformation program. So we launched our uh, CRM, Dynamics 365, in 2019, um, uh, which has been very successful. We've also developed a data warehouse currently implementing um, SharePoint uh, and are about to launch a, a new resident self-service portal, uh, which we've uh, developed with Hallnet. That will be going live uh, in, a, in about a month's time. Um, we have a number of other projects. Um, one interesting one is uh, a school called the Phoenix Academy, um, which delivers Chartered Institute of Housing qualifications to staff, to residents and to community members. Um, and we run this using Microsoft Teams for Education, which, is, uh, which has been very successful and well received. Um, so in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's our program and we're very pleased to be chosen as one of the uh, top 30 digital housing providers. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Uh, next up, we've got Martin Honeywood, who is the lead enterprise architect at Raven Housing Trust. Hi there. Thank you, Joe. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, Raven Housing Trust, so we're down in Surrey, about 10,000 homes. We're on a top to bottom uh, transformation program. And, and I think some of your speakers said really looked at our target operating model, our vision and strategy, and then aligned our technology to that. I suppose three parts for our transformation. Um, the first one was really our foundation. So like many of you rolling out Office 365, using Teams for collaboration, um, finding out what SharePoint does and all the various users that uh, we, we could enhance that with. Um, we also was really focused on cybersecurity. So SOC and SIEM 24 seven monitoring to make sure we had that foundation piece in. And then our, our sort of data warehouse Power BI as our, um, as our tool for reporting purposes and started some IoT projects on devices around uh, damp and emergency lighting. And now we're expanding that project's gone really, really well. On the top of that, we, we really focused on getting digital personas for our staff. So understanding what their needs were around applications and hardware and for our resident segmentation. So really understanding the different types of uh, residents and, and uh, customers we really had, particularly where we have house sales, some commercial customers and um, and social housing customers with very different needs, but all have different different digital kind of personas in that respect. So we set that foundation out. Now we're moving to Dynamics 365. So again, a, a number of cloud services uh, coming online, starting to play with AI, uh, digital telephony, as well as part of that practice. And I think I'll be quiet now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Much appreciated. Um, next up, we've got Paul Harris who is the Executive Director of Customer Experience at Curo. All right, morning, everyone. Um, I'm not going to give you a list of all the things that we've done or not done. Um, we've covered a lot of the same ground that many of the previous speakers have. I think the one thing that we're doing that might be a bit different from some is that we are using um, agile frameworks to deliver our change. And that's across digital technology as well as uh, non-digital as well. So we're using the scaled agile framework. And we've only been doing it for six months or so, but um, it's, uh, it's been very interesting, and I think that's going to be the way forward for us in terms of how we deliver more change into the business. So that's it from me. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. You've, you've given me a bit of a catch-up there on time. Appreciate that. Um, 
Next up, we've got, um, we're entering the top 20 now. So in 20th position, we've got uh, Abby Williams, the IT Director at Live West. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, Live West is a large housing association in the southwest. Uh, we go from Cornwall to Gloucester, and we've got 38,000 homes. Um, our digital strategy has been focused on, like everyone else, making sure our customers have easy access to our services, um, and also that our people have the right systems and kit for them to do their jobs. Um, our strategy is based on three pillars of standardization, progression, and innovation and in practice uh, like others that's meant that every member of staff has standardized access to laptops and tablets and 365 technology um, which was really beneficial um, for COVID because um, it just meant everybody could flip over to working instantaneously um, and I think that's reflected in our staff satisfaction scores which are running about 91 percent at the moment um, and we've got uh, around 90 percent for customer satisfaction ratings um, in terms of innovation, we're using uh, digital signatures, uh, virtual assistance technology to support customer services, and we're um, investing in robotics process automation um, and predictive analytics, um, drawing on our data warehouse. Um, so we've got quite an ambitious digital strategy, a big focus probably like others on channel shifting and customer experience, and that's really starting to come through in the various steps that we've got, which we where we look at social media, job applications, new homes, digital reporting. That's it. Brilliant. Thank you, Abby. Um, in the 19th position, we have Eastlight Community Homes. Now, we have multiple attendees from Eastlight. Um, we've got Carolyn, Charlotte and Scott. Um, who would like to, to speak? That's me. Morning, everyone. Um, my name's Charlotte Todd. I'm Property Director at Eastlight Community Homes. Um, we've got 12,000 homes across Essex and Suffolk. Um, we were previously Cone Housing and Greenfields Community Housing and completed our merger on the 1st of July last year, um, which was all virtually. Um, that was really challenging because um, as the largest community gateway in the country, we had 5,000 shareholding customers who needed to vote on our merger and our name change and that was um, completed through a virtual special general meeting. Um, we held the Future of Eastlight Festival with our customers back in November, which has led to our service delivery strategy being shaped. Um, and we're looking at using data that we have to build predict predictability models um, to move our interactions with our customers from a reactive to proactive basis and to have 100% of our services fully delivered end to end um, digitally by 2027. Um, we're really keen to keep up with the expectations that we all have as we interact with different businesses in the 2020s. So I want to really move forward our services um, to, the, to meet the expectations that our customers has. Uh, the other thing that we're doing is piloting QR codes within our blocks um, so people can access fire risk assessments and compliance data um, for, the, for the communities that they live in. Excellent. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, in 17th position, we've got Stonewater, and we've got two Karens in attendance from Stonewater, Karen Rogers and Karen Stevens. Yeah. Um, who would like to speak? It's Karen Stevens. Hi, everyone. Um, so in the last year, we've reaped the benefits of the investment we've made in digital over four years ago. Um, we became fully operational overnight as a remote working organisation, continuing to deliver our services safely on the health and well-being of our customers and our colleagues. For us, technology is enabled us to deliver our customer promise and be a great place to work. And we have used technology during the pandemic in setting the way to reimagine our future operating model, including intelligent automation of business processes, our first robots, SharePoint implementation, AI learning. Since lockdown, we've let in hundreds and built 540 homes entirely remotely. 11,000 of our customers have registered with My Home. Digital payments are exceeding a million pounds a month, and we've reduced our office carbon footprint by 50%. So we're delighted to be ranked for the first time this year. Excellent. Thank you, Karen. Okay, next up in the 14th position, we've got WHG. And from WHG, I'm hoping we have Adele O'Brien, Head of Digital and Customer Services. Yes, you do have me. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm from WHG, so we're a housing association in Walsall, but with properties across the, uh, the West Midlands, we've got 21,000 properties. 
um, at the moment. We have a digital by choice approach for our customers. Uh, we aim to have a fully automated customer journey so that we can spend our time on the customers uh, who need us. I think like others have mentioned, we have a portal. Um, we can make payments, um, uh, report a repair, not quite book a repair yet. But one of the things we're doing, which is a little bit different, I think is that we've acquired a low-code platform partnering with Mendix, and that allows us to develop our own um, our own customer portal going forward. We've started that journey already, and in the last few months, we've actually developed our own Choose and Move uh, housing application site, which is ready to go live. Then we'll be moving on to booking end-to-end -end repairs. So it's quite an exciting um, exciting piece of work for us that we can kind of be in control of our own destiny with that, which is great. Um, like others, we did a lot of the same sort of work um, around enabling our teams to work from home during uh, during lockdown, video conferencing, chatbot, um, et cetera. And again, like everyone else, we've got a strong focus on digital inclusion for our customers. So um, allowing people to have access to a tablet, also working with broadband providers uh, and full fiber providers to make, make those kind of um, accessibility issues that our customers have um, improve those and allow customers to, to have access at an affordable affordable cost for them. But our new digital strategy launching in April, it continues the work we're doing around automating the customer journey, also a lot around automating our processes for colleagues, things we found during lockdown. Uh, some of those manual paper-based uh, based processes are not going to work. Uh, in that scenario. Um, and also a new thing for us is really focusing on IoT devices and smart homes and that technology where it adds value for either us or our customers. That's us. Excellent. Thanks, Riddell. Uh, next up, we've got Julie Robinson, the Executive Director at Great Well Homes. Thank you very much. Um, so we're based in Northamptonshire and own over 5,000 homes. And you may have known us as Wellingborough Homes, but we fully rebranded in 2019 to support our growth ambitions. So our digital transformation started in 2018, where we started to move the infrastructure to um, the Azure cloud. And in 2019, it meant that all of our staff had been provided with hybrid and laptop devices um, to allow them to work flexibly. And so by the time the pandemic hit in March last year, we were able to have a smooth transition to working from home. And that led to a decision to actually not return to our main offices at all. Um, so board made that decision um, last year. Um, our customer portal launched in 2018 as well, and we've been improving it ever since. And customers set up direct debit, sign in new tenancies via the portal. Um, and we're also launching the repairs wizard where customers can book a repair um, of at a time and date to suit them um, and thanks to Microsoft Teams we even managed to hold our annual away day um, for staff in November and um, which focused on fun and team building and we even featured special guests Carol Baskin and David Hasselhoff and actually yes it was them there. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent thank you Julie. Uh, next up we've got Nicola Poulter who is the Digital Marketing and Communications Officer at Stockport Homes. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, very much like everyone else, we've um, focused on a lot of the kind of same things um, over the last year. So looking at making sure our staff, um, you know, are very mobile, they can work from home. So we um, carried out the final stages of the rollout of Microsoft 365 and Teams during the first lockdown, um, which was, yes, challenging, as you can imagine, doing that remotely. Um, but I, I was going to focus on some of the things that we're actually kind of looking at coming, you know, coming up um, in the next year. Um, so we're, we've been doing a lot on kind of chatbots. Um, so we're, we're very much looking into that. We've been using um, web chat and that's been very, very successful. We're getting about a hundred chats a week coming through. So our focus is on kind of looking at chatbots and also looking at kind of um, Alexa technology as well. So people can report a repair via Alexa, um, that kind of area we're looking into. And also where our main focus is um, procuring a new housing management system which we've just um, selected a supplier. So looking at that, improving our processes um, internally and also a new customer portal coming from that as well. And also procuring six new websites across the group, um, again, to improve our kind of customer, customer journey um, 
and um, we've got a project going about smart te technology in homes, which I know one of the previous people mentioned. Um, so looking at smart boilers, so if temperature drops in a room, um, it will notify you know the boiler, and then the temperature the boiler will go on to increase the temperature in the room. So yeah, lots of, lots of exciting stuff coming up. So yeah, that's me. Thank you, Nicola. Next up, we've got Chloe Sanderson, who is the business analyst at Ongo. Hello, yes, uh, so I'm Chloe Sanderson. I'm leading on digital transformation at uh, Ongo as part of the technology and innovation team. Um, a lot of the things that people are doing already have been, been mentioned that we're also doing too, but one of the big things for us is around the strategies that we've put together over the last year. One of these is um, Be a Great Landlord, which is one of the, the biggest ones for, for my focus around having 75% of our contacts to be digital. Um, this is around sort of getting more people registered on our customer portal, making improvements to it, um, and um, really getting that digital shift uh, across the next year to really get that focus for 2023. Um, we've got half of our tenants already registered, so that's a really good focus for us that we've had over the last year as well. It's really um, enhanced what we've been doing because people have had to go that way. Um, and there's a lot of focus for us over the next year around data and the culture internally as well. So to really get that moving and get people along on the journey with us. Super, thank you, Chloe, much appreciated. Um, right, we're entering the top 10 now and in 10th spot, we've got Prima Group and we're gonna hear from Kenny Christensen, the Group Head of Insight and Innovation. Hi, uh, yeah, so uh, we're Prima Group only a small, housing association based in Liverpool. Uh, I think that was kind of one of the focuses of our submission. We've had a, a few a few different challenges than some of the other top 10 might have had as well uh, in terms of size uh, and what we can do financially around that. Uh, a lot of the rest that everyone has spoken about, a lot of, push, uh, a lot of bigger pushes on Office 365 and Teams and things like that that we were already working on. Um, some of the other bits that we've kind of pushed on is how much we can do remotely based on the current environment that we're in, uh, which has involved uh, digital sign-ups and doing sign-ups and walk around properties and all that completely remotely uh, and even doing inspections using an augmented reality tool uh, which is one of the, the newest things we brought on it's basically to reduce the amount of visits that we'd have prior to and, and during the repair process uh, other than that mainly i'll keep it short it's it's same as most others in terms of portals and and, and apps and and data and whatnot so i'll keep it short excellent thank you very much kenny um, next up um we've got david myers from the Property Improvement Manager at Housing 21. Oh, hello everybody. So yeah, David Mays from Housing 21. Um, so in partnership with Apello, Housing 21, we've installed digital end-to-end -end emergency call systems um, in over 200 of our schemes now. So um, this technology, it not only overcomes reliability issues for the analog telecoms network, but it also provides significant enhancements to the functionality of the call systems. Um, so just to list a few, um, we've got video enabled communication is now active, um, reduced emergency call connections time from one minute 40 to four seconds. Um, there's no call queuing to care line. Um, we've got Wi-Fi enabled, wi enabled units. Um, the list goes on and on, but uh, time is quite tight. Um, so thankfully, you know, these new digital systems have been received um, very well by our residents and staff. We've actually accelerated the program now. Um, to deliver all digital installations to our circa 450 schemes over the next five years. Thank you. Thank you, David. Next up, we've got Jackie Grimes, who is a performance and innovation specialist at Irwell Valley. Hi, Joe. We've swapped over. Jackie had to leave the call, so I've joined in. It's Sam Young, um, Transformation Director at Irwell Valley here. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so we, uh, Irwell Valley is a housing association based in Salford, we've got 7,500 properties and um, we were already well on our um, regeneration um, strategy for digital as we talked, as we called it, um, where we started, so very much it was a speeding up for us, we were already set up to work remotely and that was where we were already headed when everything kicked in. Um, but really what we've been focusing on is uh, very much a transformation approach to all of this, so pulling together everything to support our corporate plans from our strategy actions, big transformation programs, and also our improvement programs, trying to really drive through how, what's our performance look like and what does that feel like to customers and linking it very closely with our customer offer. So for us, the transformation digital journey has all been about what we do, how we do it, but very much also the culture, how it feels to, as a, for colleagues, how it feels for customers. And that's where we've really put our transformation strategy and our digital strategy. Brilliant. Thank you, Sam. Um, next up, um, in seventh position, we've got South Townside Homes. I'm going to hear from Graham Priestley, 
their head of service. Hi, yeah, I work for South Tyneside Homes. We manage about 18,000 properties on behalf of South Tyneside Council. Uh, I think we, we've used the technology in the last sort of 12 or 18 months is really in how we contact customers. So when the pandemic first started, we set up a solution where we identified 7,000 tenants. So if we automated a call to them over three cycles, so we made 22,000 calls and they had the option to contact us if they needed some support or tell us that they were, they were all right. And we've took a similar approach to, to that in our Housing Plus scheme. So we've now automated all our uh, daily calls to our residents in Housing Plus schemes. Um, and again, they have the option to contact us to uh, if they need some support. So that's really freed up a lot of capacity. Instead of making calls, we can now use that capacity to, to, to deal with calls. Um, and we've continued on with that really. So now we all our gas service and electrical checks is all done automatically uh, with the ability to to contact us if you want to um, change your appointment. Uh, we want to make reminders um, as well, really. So and we've rolled that out to customer satisfaction as well in a much more timely timely fashion. Uh, a couple of things we've done practically for for, for ourselves internally is we've introduced electronic stock uh, on our DLO vans which really minimises the amount of time people can spend in stores. And we've, we've developed a mobile app for our housing staff who work on estates, which allows them to report uh, anything that crops up, but also do building safety inspections as well. And that means they can spend more time on the estates working with customers. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very, Thank you very much. Um, next up, we've got uh, Colin Inkson, who is the programme manager at Regenda. Hi everyone. Uh, yep, Colin Inkson, Program Manager at Regenda. So here we focus heavily on regeneration. You know, it's about supporting our residents. We've got a couple of education companies. We've got a care and support arm. So not only supporting our residents, but the wider community as a whole. Um, it's not all about digital for us. A large portion of our customers can't or won't access digital solutions. Um, so it's about delivering those solutions that our customers want and need. On the digital side, it's got to be so easy. It's got to be so good that they'll want to choose them solutions. Um, a core to that for us was migrating to a new online portal, all those solutions and, and services that it offers, online payments, um, repairs, reporting. We've been able to integrate it with DRS so our customers can schedule their own repairs as well. And the result of that for us is, you know, 30% reduction in telephone calls, 350% increase in online payments. Uh, so it's been great uh, for us. Uh, but it's not just been about our portal, you know, an automated telephone payment line, a new data warehouse. We're building a new BI solution for our performance management reporting. And there's loads going on. Um, it's not the end of the journey. So let's see what the future brings. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colin. Um, and now we answer our, our top three. Um, so um, we're going to hear from Susan Adams, who is Head of Programme Delivery at Optivo. Oh, you will. Um, I'm sorry for my picture not being up uh, today. I seem to have developed a rather teenage rash. Is the only way I could describe it? And it will put you off on what I'm saying. Believe you me, no one needs to see that this morning. Um, so us in Optivo, we're um, a large housing association in, in the southeast, uh, 44,000 homes. And we've been doing our digital journey for a long time. Um, and, 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 you know, with portals and everything else. So if, what we're doing, um, and it's great news what everyone else is talking about as well. Um, our strategic plan uh, for 20 to 2020 to 2025, um, many of our strategic intents are all talking about thinking big and, and our innovation and around digital transformation as well. So we're doing lots in our digital spaces for all our residents and colleagues and stakeholders. And, and we're utilizing all our stakeholders as well in, in the co-creation of that transformation. So that's really important important for us that they're part of our service design and they're part of that transformation um, uh, and, they're, and they're key design in that and we're, we're, we're taking a step back we've had our portal live for a long time and, and we've we're investing quite heavily in a lot of the customer journey mapping this year as well around that so when we then make it better and with the move of our portal to the cloud what we're actually doing around the AI chatbot as well as so we're making sure that we've got that absolutely uh, absolutely right and we, we've also brought in the agile work and as well and some new tool sets around that to enable us to do that um, and the use of agile frameworks and uh, bringing in other tools like JIRA and Monday to enable to do that. 
as an organisation as well, we're investing in digital infrastructure to ensure our residents have access to infra, uh, ultra fast fibre connections as well. And we've done a huge amount of work around automation this year as well. So OptiBot is live and present um, and uh, we've got lots of automations and lots of good stuff um, going on around the automation of our processes as well. Um, I could speak to you about that all day. Um, so, you know, and then we're also looking at the other things around that whole selection around AI and how that can help us on our journey from the Internet of Things, you know, in the Azure cloud um, and, and what that looks like. So it's exciting times. Um, it's that exciting. It's given me a rush, but it's exciting times at Optivo. Excellent. Thanks, Suzanne. And then um, finally, in second position, because we're going we're to save our first position for the main presentation, um, we've got Believe Housing. And from Believe Housing, um, we've got three attendees, uh, Mark Walsh, Kate Abson, and Colin Tempest. Um, who's, who's speaking, Mayor? Hi, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm Colin Tempest. I'm the Director of Technology for Believe. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here today. Um, our vision of Believe is to create a life without barriers, and the success of our digital push project has, I think, two main aspects. First of all, it's about having a clear vision of what we're trying to achieve. And for us, that means improving customer journey and customer experience by using technology, but also good design. And secondly, and probably more, more importantly, it's creating an inclusive culture where everyone's involved in the project and digital is part of everyone's job. Um, so as an example, while we've had our busiest year, like everybody this year, um, we've delivered 16 digital projects during lockdown and yet our employee engagement scores are higher than they've ever been, which makes me pretty proud of what the, the whole organization's trying to build. That's good. brilliant. Thank you for that, Colin. Much appreciated. Um, so we're going to move on to our next um, segment of the, of the webinar, uh, where we're going to get a little bit of feedback from our judges. Um, and first up, I'd like to introduce uh, Brian McIntyre, um, who is the Chief Digital and Technology Officer at Homes England. Thank you, Joe. Um, so it was a real honour to, to judge this, this, uh, this competition. And I have to say, I was really blown away by the, the quality of the submissions that, that came through. Um, proof, if proof were needed, that the housing sector is vibrant, innovative, digitally mature, and deeply in touch with the needs of its users. Um, I, I was going to go through some of the key themes that have, that have come through in the in the, the entries, uh, but you've obviously heard a lot about those, so I, I will I will skip over a little bit to avoid being repetitious. But you know, I have almost come out in a rash with excitement uh, with uh, with what I have read. Um, so, customer and user centricity is 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 there as a theme through all of it. But, you know, I've read about so many housing providers who have really focused on the fundamentals. We heard earlier about getting the foundations right and things like the, 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 the migration to cloud, the, the embracing of collaboration platforms that, that enable uh, people to, to continue working through, through COVID. Uh, business continuity and infrastructure resilience, cybersecurity comes through as strong themes. But it was particularly impressive to read about the, the, the fact that internet connectivity for tenants is seen as a, an, an essential utility. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, in, in many, many cases, a well being and welfare consideration. Uh, and that came through as a really strong theme. Um, data and data-led decision making supported by analytics tools and skills and even uh, in some cases the use of, of data to support uh, well-being and safe, safeguarding of tenants which was particularly inspiring. Uh, driving efficiency and quality through things like business process automation, robotic process automation, artificial intelligence um, it seems to be really sort of driving the, the, the quality and efficiency of services within the sector. And then the, the many of you were really focusing down on the tenant experience. So we've heard about the, the, the tenant portals, uh, driving self-service supported by mobile apps, chatbots and a AI, but um, also things like the end-to-end -end digital repairs experience and remote viewing that we, we've heard about already. Um, but we also hear about the colleague experience and how the, 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 the quality of services that are provided are enhanced by a great colleague experience. So um, many of you are investing in a, a colleague engagement and digital culture, 
and empowering your workforce through this is in real time data in the hands of, of people working in the field. And then finally, sustainability and energy performance. We, we, we've seen so much of IoT being used for asset management, performance monitoring of, of units and sustainability monitoring and really using data harvested from, from the, the units themselves to, to drive a, an energy performance and reduce carbon footprint. And uh, we also saw uh, some excellent examples of partnerships with industry and academia through all of that. Now, the golden thread that runs through this, of course, is the social mission of the housing sector, which can be seen clearly as the inspiration behind each and every investment and innovation that, that, that is made. So um, finally, I just want to say that the judging this competition has made me more proud than ever to be working in the housing sector. And um, I think all of you should be incredibly proud of what you've achieved in your own organizations. Thank you, Brian. Um, next up, we're going to hear from another one of our judges, um, which is Mike Brogan, who is the Chief Executive of Procure Plus. Yeah, hi, everybody. Th thanks, Joe, and thanks for everybody for the contributions. It was, uh, as said before, an honour to be a judge of these things. I saw a limited number of the applications, as we all did, because there were so many. Uh, they, they, they had to be broken down into to groups. That in itself is a fantastic accolade because what it's telling us is that there's an awful lot going on out there. Uh, as I was looking through the, the ones that I judged, it seemed to me there were three kind of themes in there. Uh, and the themes were around projects. And thank you, Colin, for mentioning projects before and the multiple projects that you're doing, because I'll come back to that in a minute, where I think that's the key going forward. There was something around strategy. Um, and then I uh, just heard from uh, the, the last speaker around uh, mission statements and things of like that. I think mission, vision, strategy, all those things, are they're there uh, and everybody seems to have one, quite rightly, but it's almost like the same words in different combinations. So that, that's kind of a generic uh, platform, if you like, or a state of affairs that uh, is a lodestar where you, you aim to be going in a particular way, but it doesn't mean anything unless it reduces to uh, activity and that could reasonably be called a project so i think that's where the emphasis has to be really what what you're actually doing to make these things work uh, carbon reduction was referred to before that is very uh, important these days with global warming but that, that in itself though is a project so when I have these conversations with Joe about these various awards as I do from time to time I tend to say smashing, but what next? You know, what, what are you going to do now? What, not necessarily what you're going to do, Joe, but what are all these people collectively going to do to drive this forward? And it seems to me that IT is a leveler. So we've heard lots of people saying, I've got 50,000 houses and somebody else is saying, well, I've got three or 1,500 or whatever the number happens to be. IT should be a leveller and the industry that we're all in and enjoy working in and as the last speaker said before, it's a movement uh, rather than industry and we do have that common purpose about providing houses for people that can not necessarily afford to go out into the market and get their own houses so we're dealing with the less fortunate people in, in the main uh, and they need support, and IT is a fantastic way of doing it. So it's a leveler within a movement, as far as I see. Uh, and then over and above that, what we also have to appreciate, as I'm sure you all do, and it's come through loud and clear from the conversations, systems are systems, and uh, the one of the earlier presentations was talking about shelving, I think was the term used. Uh, and that's what happens unless you actually do some education, uh, unless you engage with not just the staff, but also the tenants so that they can take best advantage of what's going on. So, yes, I was pleased to see 
so many new good ideas coming through, but it did leave me thinking at the end of it all, what next? How are these individual organizations going to share not just what they've done and say how well it went, but I'm sure you all have scars on your back from each of the projects that you've done and they need to be shared as well. So it's whether or not your chat rooms, Joe, are a reasonable way going forward to allow people to share their experience. You might have a, some kind of a menu there. Not everybody can do everything at the same time or at the same rate, but if we're all gonna achieve these generic strategies, we do have to jump in and start with some projects, but share the success and failures of the particular projects such that we can accelerate the whole thing. Excellent, thank you, Mike. Some, some very um, interesting insights and words there from both Brian and Mike, thank you very much. Um, so we're moving on now to um, hear from um, the ranked first place housing provider in the HD Top 30. And it's my honor to introduce um, the Director of Technology, Digital and Data Paul Croston from Holton Housing. So first and foremost, uh, just a very brief introduction. Um, so Paul Croston, Director of Technology, Digital and Data. Uh, I'm relatively new to Holton as an organization. So um, more than happy to walk through our digital journey, um, but I think can't particularly take uh, much credit for that. And I think it's, it's great that I've inherited uh, a pretty good team who've, who've been working on, on digital and, and transformation for a long time. So I'll, I'll, I'll sort of walk you through that. Um, so just a little bit about Halton Housing. Uh, so we're based up in, in the Northwest covering Runcorn and Widness and, and we uh, manage approximately 7,000 homes uh, and we've got about 330 staff. Um, so it's something that is, um, again, we, we're focusing on our core mission, which is improving people's lives. Um, and it, that really does run through um, everything that we, we try to achieve. Um, so really encouraging what we, we've heard this morning, uh, very similar experience, uh, the challenges that, that people um, have talked about today. Um, but Halton's been on a journey for, for quite a while. Um, and I think in terms of um, delivering um, digital transformation, you know, right back to virtualization of, of servers. But I think really the, the key start of that was, was a digital first program and really shifting away from you know, traditional um, ways of operating through to being um, early adoption of Office 365, but really thinking about that whole enterprise mobility. So again, some of that has really paid off. Um, also really with a core focus around innovation or disruption as it was termed um, when it was first set up in 2017. So really a very specific team looking for those different ways of working um, and the technologies that would support that. Um, and that's really driven lots of um, engagement uh, with, with um, academia, with uh, commercial sectors, trying to understand what ha happens elsewhere and looking for inspiration um, to really drive innovation. Um, and something that was part of our submission uh, was really about the, really looking at how our customers see us uh, and perceive our systems, our technology, our interactions with them, um, and really understand it from their perspective and, and not to presume um, that, that we knew best uh, and engage with customers. And there's certainly been a number of things moving forward in the last sort of few years, like everybody else, looking at smart compliance, looking at the internet of things um, and, and really strengthening our, um, our capabilities around um, sensors and, and working with, um, with partners to, to really deliver things that are gonna uh, pay benefits in the long term for us. Uh, and as we move forward, it, it moves forward into our, our sort of main transformation program, which is, is what we're terming driving our future. But first and foremost, what we've, we've really 
recognised is that we've got to get our foundations right. And I think a lot of people uh, have said that this morning as well. Um, so it's really making sure that our all of our people, not just IT, have got the right kind of kit, access to the right kind of systems, that the skills that we provide to people, making sure that our, our employees have the right digital skills um, to be able to work flexibly. Um, we, we're also very keen on, on brand and reputation as well, and that we drive partnerships um, really to deliver that, that culture uh, of innovation that you know, we, we want that pipeline of creativity um, to really make sure that we're not resting on our laurels to, to move things forward. So really the scope of our digital focus today is, you know, again, very similar to everything that we've heard um, fr from other people today. Uh, you know, data and insight, yes, we want to do more. We want to understand more about what data that we have, where it exists, how it flows through our systems, um, how people consume that data through to the automation, again, ro robotic process automation, uh, event-driven automation as well um, across our systems, how our customers um, are really experiencing our, our systems and interactions with us. Um, but it, it, it's really making sure, as, as others have said, that we, we provide a range of options um, to our customers because we recognize the not everyone wants to interact digitally. Um, you know, they do want to speak to people, but what we want to make sure is that that experience and the experience of our colleagues as well is really important um, to deliver uh, those services. And the, the other thing that, that we also recognize around data is very much the, the long-term uh, ambitions that we have both as an organization, but also that's being set down by government in, in things like carbon footprint reduction is that we recognize we've got to have the right kind of data, the right kind of insight um, to focus that, to make sure that our, our decision-making is absolutely uh, robust in everything that we do. Uh, like others, um, in terms of the, certainly the, the last 12 months, uh, albeit I've not been around for, for all of it, um, the, the investment that's gone before really paid off. Uh, so like others, the, the transition to remote working for an organization was, was there. Um, the organization was working very agile already. Um, and it, it's something that, you know, we recognize that our back office staff have, have transitioned really well, but we were also very, very aware of our frontline staff. Um, but again, because of the technology and the system processes that we had in place already, that there wasn't a major disruption other than the, the obvious things that were caused by the pandemic. Um, the last 12 months really have been about reaping the benefits from what we termed was the customize insight program. And, and that was really engaging with customers. And with that focus of looking at it from their perspective um, and really trying to make sure that we do move from being reactive to preemptive in everything that we do. Um, and it was, that process was engaging customers in forums, getting them involved in understanding our processes, understanding from our perspective, but really focusing um, on, on what they needed from us rather than the, a presumption from us. Um, and that sort of moves forward into, um, into our dri driving our future which is our transformation program. Um, and that has been um, making sure that what we do take from creativity and innovation, that we also ensure that we've got a commitment to deliver. So making sure that we've got the project um, robustness in place, that we are managing projects, but we know that these things are challenging. Um, and it's making sure that we have that commitment to our customers that when we do deliver, say we're going to deliver things, that we actually do it. Um, in terms of some of the projects that we've delivered over the last 12 months, um, it's ranged from um, a, new, a new corporate intranet for our employees uh, to make sure that they've got the right information, access to the right systems, all to hand uh, very easily, all, all delivered via Office 365 and SharePoint. Uh, a Leadership Matters program being very clear that we're developing the skills and digital skills, leadership skills 
um, of all of our leaders throughout the organization. So it's not, not uh, concentrated uh, to senior leadership at all. A cloud migration uh, shift in all of our um, uh, legacy systems into, in, into Azure, um, you know, using the latest technologies that are there to deliver legacy systems, which I think the team have done a fantastic job so far. So that's, that we're nearly there with that one. And we've wet, been working very closely um, on, on our homes system, systems alignment. We know that, that, that through the customized program, the you know, responsive repairs, um, planned works, we're all very important to customers. So again, making sure that the data that flows through those systems and the way in which our employees can use those systems to deliver that service have been critical. So, and we've got a lot more uh, coming in that space as well in terms of uh, system capability we want to add in there. Uh, last month, we deployed a, a, a refresh customer portal and app. Um, big thing there we're, we're really proud of is that we worked agilely uh, with, with the, um, with customers, they were, they were part of the project. Uh, they were, we got feedback all the way through all the iterations. Um, we got feedback, we incorporated feedback and where the feedback, um, we couldn't deliver in that time frame. We're being, being very clear, uh, about where we expect to deliver those things, but we took that feedback on board, uh, and it's been received incredibly well. Um, this week we've, we've launched the new IT service management, um, process and, and solution that really is driving at how we deliver our IT services, um, which is going to help me in terms of performance management um, across the organization and making sure that the, we are the enablers uh, for all of our colleagues who, who are providing the services direct to, um, to customers. And then there's the external website, which is uh, something, again, part of making sure that we get customers involved. We understand what our stakeholders want from us as well um, and, and deliver that um, uh, next month. Actually, that, that's going to be going live. So it's, it's, it's been very, very sort of busy a uh, few months, especially with the pandemic. But the, the, the whole project, the whole transformation project, there's, there's a lot more there. Uh, and very, very similar projects to, to what everybody else was, uh, has been talking about today. Um, so just an example there talking about the, the, the portal and the app that we delivered to customers. Um, again, it, it's been really, really positive, uh, really good effort by the team, but I think the, the response from customers has, has been great. And we are seeing um, increased sign up. Uh, through that, even, albeit that we've we've purposely done it as part of a soft launch process, uh, but we are encouragingly seeing more people signing up um, naturally. Uh, and just a couple of things that we're doing uh, at the moment. Uh, I think other people have mentioned this this morning as well. The virtual diagnostics. Um, it's very much part of our innovation um, theme that we're looking because of the uh, of the pandemic, but we see it being part of our offering. Uh, going forward but it's something that we're very clear on that as part of our innovation that we ex we accept that there's going to be failures of, of innovation um and it's something that we're really keen on and you know it, it, it's been something like virtual diagnostics is challenging because there's so many variables involved the capability of the customer the the, the uh, network availability um, of the customer as well so it's all these things that we're helping uh, our customers to understand how we can help them, but also we're learning so much to understand what the capabilities of our customers and the technology are going to do for us. Um, and really one of the big things that we're really focusing some of our innovation efforts on is understanding, you know, we, we've got lots of pilots running, we've done lots of work with academia about um, smart sensors, helping us to understand the performance of our, of our uh, building fabric. Um, but we've, we're very clear that we've got to be able to um, bring all that together in, in a consistent way and to be able to um, really exploit the data uh, that we've got at our hands. So we're really focusing on trying to bring that all together under digital twins a type concept that, that pulls together lots of, lots of elements of data, tries to standardize that data and, and then really apply predictive analytics to that to understand what where do we need to focus our efforts um, but also to make sure that our 
our business users have got the the best information to hand so that when they are planning investment works that they're, they're going to be very clear on what they need to do where they need to spend their money that we are getting value for money um, and that we can also demonstrate return on investment um, through through data okay um, and I think that's that's the end of my uh, brief uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Paul. And if everyone wants to join me in just saying congratulations to Holton Housing for taking top spot at the 2021 um, Top 30 Digital Housing Providers. Congratulations, Holton Housing. Um, next up, we've got a presentation from Martin Cookbill, who's Director of Alert to Call, all about digital switchover 2025 and the opportunities that creates for housing providers. Over to you, Martin. Thanks very much, Joe. Um, so I'm conscious of the fact that uh, that's a mighty fine ambition to reimagine your services for digital switchover in a five minute slot. So I'm going to need to get a wiggle on. Um, just for those that don't know who Alert Call are, we are um, an organisation that provides housing management service where you've got enhanced hire management required uh, in sheltered supported housing because you learn difficulties and also temporary accommodation. We work with about 50 housing providers across the UK at the moment. Um, I'm only going to share a couple of slides, literally. Um, and the first one is I really just wanted to share with you, in effect, a bit of a preview. Over the past um, six months, we've produced three thought leadership pieces, which are absolutely relevant to what we've been uh, talking about this morning. So I just wanted to make people aware of them. So the first of them, it was about uh, barriers to digital engagement. You know, you can have a website, you can have a portal, you can have an app, but actually it's not necessarily a case of build them and they will come. There are still kind of some barriers to overcome to get the adoption levels high, to get that engagement level as high as it could be. And that was the purpose of that first booklet. We did um, a webinar with the CIH, as we did with all three of these. Um, with each webinar, we produced this kind of like 20 page guide associated with each one. So that first one covers kind of like barriers to increasing digital engagement. The second one, um, we actually did a survey amongst over 200 social housing professionals, uh, and it covered everything from the here and now, how easy do you think your website is to use, right through to um, are you aware of digital switchover and have you got digital switchover as part of your digital engagement strategy um, and there were some fascinating things that came out of that um, one of them for example was only one in six housing providers included digital switchover in their strategy as things stand at the moment now the survey was done in the autumn it might have increased um, over the past six months i'm sure it has um, but there were some quite significant um, implications arising from that, which are contained in that booklet. And because there was kind of like um, quite a bit of learning to, to go on there, we did the third webinar and booklet, which was simply describing um, what digital switchover is. And um, what was it? What are the implications for social housing providers? Um, but Importantly, what are the opportunities that come from it? Because I think some people are looking at this as potentially, you know, a big investment cost, uh, but actually there's a real opportunity here to dramatically improve the service offering um, and the efficiencies within the organisation. And it goes on to describe some of those as well. Um, uh, just one tiny story, which kind of illustrates that. I was speaking to a social housing provider literally in the past two weeks who talked about the fact they're going to need to upgrade their hardwired alarm systems because of digital switchover. And they've been quoted by their hardwired provider, um, a cost of over 300,000 uh, pounds for 120 odd homes. Um, you know, you could probably do that with a different solution for literally a quarter of the price. Um, so why is this of all interest to us? And one of the things that I think, you know, the sector could be thinking about is that um, our service, we try and tackle the sort of the challenges of digital engagement and digital switchover by, for example, having an incredibly easy to use interface. And we give our touchscreens away. We make no charge for the touchscreens. And we also include in any network SIM card in there. So if you're deploying this in places without Wi Fi at the moment, it's not a barrier to introducing the service. Um, and it's a great way to sort of improve 
uh, messaging, repair reporting, uh, but also if you add in what's required for digital switchover, we've got lots of other add-ons that could be included in there. If you go down that route of Wi-Fi, then actually not only do you dramatically cut investment costs, but you could add in smart devices, CCTV, you can link it to door entry. So, you know, our devices could have somebody at the door on screen, um, smoke, um, fire evacuation policies on the screen in connection with your smoke alarms, video calling. There's kind of like a whole cornucopia of things that can be included if a different model is approached, as opposed to saying, well, let's just replace our analog hardwired system with a digital hardwired system. There's a massive amount of potential there. And that third booklet, if I go back to that one, that just gives some ideas. I think there's some great food for thought included in that. Um, and that was all I was going to say. <laughs>